Jimmy Zong spent billions of dollars worth of crypto in order to feel validated by frats and sororities. And now he's completely broke. I guess, David, what can we learn from all this? Yeah, we got to talk about it because a minute documentary just dropped on Jimmy Zong, Andrew, the rise and the fall. Long story short, Andrew, he was a self-described fat, ugly, weird kid growing up in Cobb County, Georgia. Very, very, very non-Asian area. Mostly white, right? So he wants to be cool. He's good at computer science, Andrew. He gets on Bitcoin early. He kind of semi-steals a bunch of it from the Silk Road, which was a dark web thing. Uh, Andrew, basically, he becomes worth $3 billion at one point. And he spent about $30 million impressing all his friends, or quote-unquote friends, in the white frats and white sororities. The FBI seizes all of his crypto, and now he's got nothing. Right. And uh, we don't even know if he has a lot of the same friends anymore. So essentially, his life is ruined. Um... Potentially, he's still an Uber or Lyft driver around town. We don't know. But anyways, guys, this is a true story. And it also relates to a lot of people, a lot of other stories that we've heard of and even people in our own lives. So if you guys are uh, ready to hear our commentary on this, please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys right after this. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised, Andrew. You know, listen to this story. I, I think you feel a lot of different emotions, especially if you're an Asian guy and you've seen this before. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it could make you sad. It could make you mad. Or you could just be like, Yo, that reminds me of that guy yeah, that I yeah. grew up with. Yeah, I mean, here's some even other names that who have a similar story. Joe Lowe, who's actually a wanted criminal right now by the... Uh, Malaysian government. It, my, by Interpol, yeah, actually. Yeah. He took $5 billion from the Malaysian government. Yeah, but he was spending it on Hollywood people and running in those circles trying to be feel validated. Also, sadly, it kind of reminds people of the story of Tony Shea. Rest in peace. But, you know, like if you guys read about that story, it kind of seems like he was trying to impress a lot of people and validate himself in a certain way, which may have led him down a certain path. Um, and, yeah, it's just even people from our own upbringing. So I guess, David, one thing that's a common thread, and I don't want to blame it on everything, but it seems like being a nerdy Chinese guy even with a billion dollars, it doesn't change everything. And maybe that's what these guys were hoping to do. They were hoping to feel accepted. Uh, maybe uh, some of these guys were not put in a great position to impress a lot of people. But regardless, they have a lot of money, but it still doesn't work out the way they want. Yeah. I mean, we're going to get into the comments section then our own takeaways. Andrew, the first comment was uh, basically people in the crypto community defending him. And okay. these are, these are non-Asian people. I'm, I'm going to get into the Asian comments later. But some of the crypto people feel like the FBI did him wrong. Because some of the coins were stolen from the Silk Road, which is dark web. It's a lot of drug money. But some of them were legitimately his that he just mined when he was, like, being a early adopter. Yeah, no, and I'm not trying to, like, villainize Jimmy Zong. Because, actually, if you read the details, it, he didn't really, like, steal and commit a real crime of, of anything, especially uh, because also the dark web is already, like, a criminal thing that they got in trouble for their own thing. Anyways... Basically, he's not really a criminal. So, but I, I, that's why I think people feel bad for him and you can empathize because listen, it was like, you could almost sum it up like fat nerd gets a lot of money, wants to impress people. FBI ends up knocking him for it kind of unfairly, takes everything. Now he's broke and has no friends. I feel bad. Would you say, though, two years ago, Andrew, you saw a lot of Jimmy Zongs because crypto was pumping. You know, Bitcoin was at 60K. Is it true that a lot of people who are deep, deep, deep into crypto possibly are in a similar situation where you, you get so rich beyond your wildest dreams and you want to live like a rock star or a celebrity? Yeah, for sure. And you want to spend it on the flashiest people and the people that you kind of always fantasized or dreamt about. Or that you aspired to be accepted yeah, by, right? Yeah, but it's not really people who necessarily care about you. It's not the community. It's not necessarily your family. Hopefully you are spending some on your family, but like you're really spending on it to release dopamine and just feel cool. But it's so fleeting and it's so shallow because in those circles, you can kind of pay your way to get in, but it doesn't mean it stays with you. And you know, everybody knows somebody in their life, whether they've observed them from afar or close in like middle school or high school that was kind of like this, you know, yeah. they're not, they're not to the same level. These are like the, the, the 15 out of 10. I mean, examples, listen, right? we don't know any of these crypto billionaires, but you knew a guy in high school that kind of was like this, like his family owned some restaurants. He had a little bit of cash. And he, what, would try to throw parties yeah. for people? His name was Michael Finn, and I'm just saying, you know, to hide the identity. But this guy was obsessed with, like, all the prettiest white people at school. Like, he wanted to be accepted by them so bad that he would, like, it almost felt like he was, like, their slave. 
<laughs> I'm just saying, man. I'm keeping it real. Um, a lot of people said that why is there so many parallels with the story of Tony Shea, the billionaire of Zappos.com, Andrew, as well as Joe Lowe. Um, obviously, you know, we had mentioned them earlier. What are the, some of the similarities in story? Yeah, I mean, it's just these... Uh, Asian guys, Chinese guys, be- China, particularly Chinese. I'm not saying it only happens to Chinese, but these three guys happen to be Chinese or Taiwanese. Okay. Of some sort. Uh, they are growing up in very, very non-Asian areas and they want to be accepted by the cool, pretty white people. Right. Mm-hmm. Who, who is that at Georgia state bulldogs? Right. Or, uh, I'm sorry, university of Georgia. That's going to be frats and sororities. And right. Mostly white people. Right. Right. And, uh, I believe that Tony Shea wanted to be accepted by a lot of, uh, I don't know, models probably, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, I, and, and I don't want to like blame it on wanting to be around white people, but I think it's just more speaks to their uh, insecurities as people and their kind of like lack of self-love and their possibly, you know, level of self-hate maybe that drives them to want to like live this crazy life and spend all this money around people who don't actually care about them. You know, I wish that they were more around an Asian community or maybe that doesn't solve anything. Maybe there's people within the Asian community that still act like this too. I don't of know. course, um, Andrew, the Asian male message boards, Reddit and stuff like that, they had a ton of things, a uh, ton of comments. Somebody said, it's sad to think that some Asian males upon becoming wealthy want to be seen in the cool crowd thinking they will be accepted when in reality that is often not the case they want your money not you they want what your talents and labor produce not you Mm. yeah i mean and i want to say i think nowadays it's changing a little bit it's not just about being asian but obviously these guys uh for example like maybe jimmy he's like if you look at him he clearly stands out of the friend group he's clearly not looking like everybody he's not like a buff asian guy he actually looks like a giant version of the guy from the korean cartoon lookism Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah the, like before the, the transformation. Right, right, right. I mean, it is. I'm not going to lie. Like, they probably called him, like, and by the way, Jimmy, if you see this, no disrespect to you, but, uh, like, Jabba the Hutt or something no, like that. No, I'm sure that they were teasing him behind his back or nicknames, and I mean, I'm assuming that the women were not all attracted to him, and he wasn't, he, he was just trying to spend the money how he could, but I don't know if he knew how to deploy the capital correctly. Right. Do you think he should have just lost weight and maybe moved to Asia or something like that? I don't even think he had that thinking growing up in Cobb County, Georgia. Yeah, honestly. But that's probably what he should have did because you see some fat guys in Asia living it up. Honestly, sometimes that's the answer. If you really don't fit in somewhere and you're so far from fitting in, you know, you're so far from it. Like, there is possibly an Asian guy who fits into that area, but it wasn't going to be him. And I was like, dude, if you feel that outsided, you got to change your whole scheme. You can't just throw money at it. It's no longer a matter of money. It's a matter of environment. And then it's also you have to change yourself. Yeah, especially in America, which is a country, if you guys know, that has late, late stage capitalism. A lot of people, they almost like are past money. No, they have enough money. Like, yeah. just because you have a billion dollars if you're an extremely unappealing person it doesn't mean everyone's gonna like you because like uh, damn bilzerian still gotta look like damn bilzerian and have a bunch of money right 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 right. um somebody said hearing about his family troubles and lack of acceptance in school it's hard not to feel bad for him although what he did was wrong he was just trying to achieve what he could not as a kid Mm. somebody said great documentary so sad that jimmy still got rejected from women even when he had a suitcase full of cash i burst out laughing when i learned that even though it was hard to think about. Um, Yeah, basically, long story short, Andrew, there is a story where Jimmy Zong had a a suitcase full of $700,000 to impress women to, like, hook up with him, and they still did not. This is in his uh, FBI testimony. Yeah, well, that's because that's weird. That's not how you hook up with women who are especially not professionals at that job. I don't understand, like, see, this is the weird thing about a lot of people who come from a... Who, who ha- makes such a huge jump from being kind of like... Uh, outcast, right? Outcast, and then they just get a bunch of money. They think that they can literally wear money, and they're like, yeah, I got money, ladies. And I'm like, well, guys, come on. If you understand human nature, that's not exactly how things work, especially in America. Maybe that might work in some parts of a different country, but that's not how it's going to work in America. Somebody said... Almost everyone forgets about Asian males altogether, much less prioritizing mental health. We even forget to take care of our own mental health. It's important that we have to have the ability to live our lives fully, that we make use of our talents, because it's just going to, life is always going to be way more difficult for us than some white Chad. You know, and and this seems like such a trivial thing to say sometimes, like a, like a, 
almost like a solution. But, David, I wish these guys, like, all these guys played more team sports. I think playing team sports would have helped them find just, like, just not think like this. That's yeah. what I think. Like, I don't know, doing martial arts or something would just help you not think so in a way ridiculous. Like, yeah, I have money. I'll just spend it, and then I'll be cool. I'm like... Dude, like, if you play a sport, you already know, like, you have all the money in the world. They don't make you better at that sport. Right. Everything, like, it still kind of teaches you about meritocracy is what I'm saying. Somebody said, Jimmy Zong deserved better. We all must learn a lesson from this and make sure that we should only be concerned about ourselves and our community. This was uh, obviously off the Asian board. Yeah, um, I agree. You know, I just think that a lot of people, they don't receive the right coaching. Uh, from what I read, Andrew, he had a very strained relationship with his Chinese mainland immigrant parents. Mm. They probably did not provide a lot of good parenting outside of, like, study hard, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they probably weren't great communicators. I mean, I'm sure they were great parents in the sense that they provided him a life and took care of him and everything like that. But as far as, like, teaching some kid in Georgia how to grow up and how to maneuver and how to be happy. Because think about it. Listen, immigrant parents can teach you how to survive, teach you how to work hard oftentimes, but some of the things that they're missing and not fully to their fault, they're missing how to teach you how to maneuver around life and how to be happy. Those are the things that it's very, very hard for immigrant parents parents to teach yeah it's almost like they can teach you basketball skills but they can't teach you the flow of the game like five on five schematics and like knowing well they can't teach you a passion for the game yeah either. you can't teach that somebody said he should have migrated and moved to an island destination and he could have lived like a king instead uh believe the um, in the american dream and about how america is better but it did not work the way that he did um he was basically also referencing that some white tech guys that come up on like a hundred million or a billion dollars do move to the islands there have been several cases in the past documented in yeah this. and i think that at the end of the day if you introduce yourself to people by throwing money at them you're not starting that friendship or relationship on the right foot anyways so obviously i think that the people who move to the islands like a cheap island in bali and spending a million a year you could live literally like a king there um it's like i mean i don't know if though it's like a better life too but Maybe you're just less sad, I yeah. guess. I don't it know. It sounds like he was like frozen in a very high school, like mean girls mindset. You know, trying to rise up the, you know, like glee or whatever sort of like no, Hollywood high had, school, like image that he had that was super blue pill. He was like, he. it's weird because he has some aspects of like understanding crypto, which is like super outside of the matrix and right. into the, you know, thinking different. But then when it came to his social life, he was just thinking like he was like 12. Man, maybe he felt like that those were his friends, though, and he just wanted to spend money on his friends, too. I mean, he could have really felt like, you know, not everybody has a big group of great friends. They just have the people around them. Right, and their whole worldview is being determined by that fishbowl that they're growing up in. This is the uh, the final comment. Somebody said, holy hell, I went to college at, U at UGA as an outcasted Asian guy who also just wanted to fit in with the all-exclusive white Greek life social scene just like Jimmy. So I felt everything that Jimmy did uh, and everything that he was going through in terms of social life in Athens, GA, as an Asian guy cast aside by all the pretty white people. But instead of doing what Jimmy did, I found social acceptance in Run Escape instead, which is a gigantic online RPG. Mm. So basically he's saying, I was living in the same town as him, going to the same school, and uh, I was getting millions of not real money, but virtual currency GP from Run Escape. So I'm something of a Jimmy Zong myself. I think, dude, I, you know, we know a lot of kids of particularly nerdy families that are out in the boonies or out in areas where there's no other Asians, like in the South. And it can be uncomfortable. Right. You're saying their parents might be like uh, researchers at the local university yeah. or, or might, uh, I don't know, any, I mean, they could, I guess they could run a restaurant, but it's a little bit doubtful or they're like a professor at a community but college or something. sometimes if right? you run a restaurant, at least you're part of like some type of restaurant community. I'm not saying that life is great either. I just think life is hard out there, man. When you're trying to be accepted as an Asian kid. Especially if you're nerdy and you're not yeah, like, and you, like don't you, know, a, you don't just don't get happen to be born super good looking i think it's easier for the girls but even then the looks is gonna come into play a lot yeah man it's tough man i don't i don't like i yeah. have a lot of empathy for it i've seen it like i've seen a lot of people do some lower extent of what jimmy zong did a lot in my life especially yeah. if you grow up in a non-asian area andrew let's just get into our takeaways i think this is going to be kind of a long section i mean 
What do you think the Asian community thinks about when they see this? Because everybody's seen it in their life. Obviously, if you grow up in an Asian enclave, if you happen to be, you know, like maybe really tall, good looking, really social off the rip, you know, you've probably seen less of this, but I've seen it a lot. I just wish nowadays in 2022, I can't like 2023. I mean, like, I think there's so many more resources out there in other communities that you can find. Even if you're a kid growing up in like a small town in Georgia and you totally don't fit in, there is some type of community that can is positive that you can be part of. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean shuck away trying to be accepted by your environment because I still think that there is something to be said about still trying to uh, make the best of your situation. But regardless, you got to use the resources at hand. Whether that's online, whether that's through a certain group, sports, church, video games, like whatever it is, like there's something there. Yeah, let us know in the comments section below what instances you guys have seen before. I think the one that really strikes me is Michael Finn from middle school and high school. I'm not even gonna lie, his profile photo is him being the best man at this one like really good looking white dude that we all know from high school, his wedding. Like, this guy made it his profile pic. That's so, crazy. To be shown with him. Yeah, to be shown at his friend's wedding with, with two pretty white people. Right. That's I'm, crazy to me. That's, I like, so... I can only imagine what his dating profile looks like on the dating apps. It probably has him with all the white people that he hangs out with. Yeah. Because he wants to have that. He wants to show people, like, hey, you know, I'm not just, like, a regular Asian guy. I can... I got these friends. Do you think it's important to raise your kids around an Asian community, at least nearby, if not a full-on Asian enclave like the 626 Man, or the OC definitely. or the Bay Area? When you hear stories like this, whether that's Tony Shea, J.O. Lowe, and he was isolated in the UK at boarding school. I know that Tony Shea... Uh, was from a non, very non-Asian area as well. You know what it is, man? If you're going to raise your kids in a area that has no other Asians in it, you better raise them to be strong and confident or you expose them to the Asian community every so often. If you're not going to go out of your way to teach them to like, you know, be around their own people or be accept or feel like what it's like to be normal to be Asian, then you have to make them very, very strong. Yeah. Uh, right. That's like your only two options. You cannot not raise them strong and then also then be the only Asian kid. Is society changing? Like all these stories are people that are like 30, 35, 40. Uh, for somebody who's 25 and under, are these cases still going to happen? A little bit, but I, I think it changes. Yeah. But I have seen kids like I feel like I've seen some like TikTokers try to seek validation from like the white crowd because they're the only kid, Asian kid at school. So their content on TikTok is kind of like cringy or like borderline disrespectful yeah, to Asians. Yeah, it feels like quasi self-hate for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. And I'm just like, ah, I don't want to watch this stuff. And I'm like, I'm sure you're, you get comments from people at school right. and you like it. So Why do you think so many of these guys are Chinese? I think that it's because, Andrew, Chinese, they have the least structured game plan. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like other groups are smaller. They might keep it more tighter. And they just have, like, different coaching. I just feel like the Chinese world is so spread out. And you could be, like, the children of, of so many different things that there's just no plan. Yeah, I think it just comes down to, like, the coaching. And obviously, I think there's a lot of Chinese people who move to all different parts of the world. So, I, I don't know. I mean... I think we could go on and on right, about this. There's no this. religion. There's Dude, no like, clannishness. Or, damn, you know, that's a whole nother video, man. I think it goes to show you America is so big and there's so many different fishbowls of different sizes you can be raised in. A lot of the things that uh, the way you perceive life are determined by the fishbowl that you spent from like zero to 17 in. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think of the story of Zimmy Zong in the comment section below. Um, have you seen this before in your own life? Let us know what you think. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.